Good afternoon, morning, wherever you are in the world. You're very welcome to our watch along for the Formula E, Rome E Prix. And this is the second race of the weekend. We had a very entertaining first race yesterday um, where we had, of course, uh, Jean-Éric Verne came through to win the race uh, with a very dramatic end, a great battle between himself and uh, himself and Degrassi until Degrassi, unfortunately, lost power, started to drop back through the field. And um, along the way, there was a huge accident that looked like uh, that one of the Mercedes, it was Van Dorn, hit a manhole cover, causing him to swim across the track and mate. And uh, the resulting safety car went through until the end of the race. So it resulted in uh, Vern winning. And that is great because that's the new powertrain that uh, DS Tech Cheetah have for this race weekend. Uh, so he was in the mix the whole time along. Uh, but he's not quite in the mix now. Looking at the qualifying that happened this morning for race two, that's happening now in a few minutes. Um, let me see if I can show you. Where we stand uh, with the qualifying. Okay, you can see here we have it. So Nick Cassidy, the rookie, uh, starts on pole position. Fantastic wet drive uh, in super pole qualifying this morning. And in second place, we have another rookie, and that's Norman Nato. So uh, great work from the rookies. Then we have Pascal Verlein. Pascal Verlein is a bit of an unknown quantity for me. He's a very skillful driver. Of course, we've seen him previously in Formula One as well. Um, previously, he was, of course, a Mercedes driver. Um, but he was driving uh, further down the field in one of the backmarker teams. Hard to know how he's going to do here. He's been very fast in his previous seasons in Formula E, but it never seems to go right for him. He, always something happens that causes him to fall down the uh, to fall down the order. Turvey starts at the back. Dennis is next. In 22nd, we have Camera. 21st, we have Lotterer. Then in 20th, yesterday's winner, Jean-Éric Verne. Rast is starting in 19th. Of course, Rast had a very good top six finish yesterday as well. Frein's 18th. De Vries uh, is in 17th. So that's very surprising from the uh, Mercedes. We have Lynn in 16th. De Costa starts in 15th. The other DS Tech Cheetah. So the DS Tech Cheetahs are way down. Longfist in the Neo is 14th. De Grassi only starts in 13th, unfortunately. Um, he was doing so well yesterday until it all fell through. Mitch Evans in 12th, Sandbird in 11th. Great race yesterday from both of the Jaguars. Let's see if they can power through the field again today. And then into the top 10. They're, go they're going to keep us hanging here. So it's Buemi that's in 10th place. They're just doing uh, the thing now where they're panning through the grid. In uh, ninth place, they have Nico Muller. Very good in the dragon card there. Then in eighth place, we have Oliver Rowland. Oliver Rowland was very impressive yesterday as well until he had that, uh, that uh, collision, unfortunately. Uh, Maratha. Martara, I should say, <laughs> not the cheese. Martara is in seventh place. And then you can see the top six we have on the screen. So Cassidy starts on pole position. Um, I have heard just after tuning in here with uh, with Eurosport, and I've heard that there will be a safety car start again. Now, looking at the track right now, it's it looks almost dry. Well, at least it is on the on the start finish straight. So we'll see how that works out for uh, the rest of the track. But it will be starting again behind the safety car, and we had a safety car start yesterday. It kind of nullifies the start ever so slightly, in my opinion. But. Yeah, it, it, all in the name of safety. Another interesting thing I heard. So the uh, the uh, boost that they get, the um, uh, I can never remember the ter terminology attack mode. So for attack mode, they have uh, three attack modes in this race. And attack mode, as you know, is is incredibly strategic. 
because it always brings in this additional element to the race as to when are you going to take your attack mode? Because yesterday we saw nose to tail racing the whole way through the field. And when somebody took their attack mode, they got overtaken by two, three, four, even five cars on occasion. This this makes it really tricky. So having three attack modes in this race, uh, this is uh, this is really going to mix it up. So the race is getting underway now. They've started behind the safety car. They're on the first lap. Um, so of course it means Cassidy is leading the race. Uh, let me very quickly just show you what the driver standings looks like at the moment. Uh, so Sandberg is winning the championship. Of course, he came second in yesterday's race, as you can see, he took 18 points there. Robin Frimes, he, he's going somewhat under the radar, I suppose. He's in second place, and we have Nick DeVries, who's dropped to third place. And unfortunately, his qualifying today doesn't, doesn't do a lot for him. Hopefully, he can make his way through the field again. Um, of particular interest here, we see Mitch Evans. So it looks like the Jaguar is a very strong package this year. Uh, Rene Rast is doing quite well there in sixth place as well, as you can see. And that, that's good, good for him. Degrassi, uh, Degrassi should be further up on this leaderboard. But unfortunately, it just didn't go well for him yesterday. Um, now, apologies. Tenth place has disappeared. So Oliver Rowland is in tenth place at the moment. But you can see it, it's quite mixed up in terms of the uh, drivers uh, that are in there and the teams that are in there. And if we if we take a very quick look uh, before we get into the action of the race, if we take a very quick look as well at the uh, team championship, you can see Jaguar out on top and DS Tech Cheetah in second place, with Mercedes third. And um, I did have a question yesterday about whether or not this was like Formula One where Mercedes have a domination. That, that's definitely not the case. Uh, Mercedes haven't dominated the sport yet. And hopefully we never will see a domination in Formula E. Hopefully it will always remain as uh, as competitive as it is at the moment. But uh, yeah, that, that's how it stands at the moment. Uh, and, you know, looking at the race points there, so Jaguar are way out ahead of everyone else. But uh, there is a long way to go. There is a long way to go and they can still be caught. So, as I said, we're racing now. Well, we're racing behind the safety car, so it's it's not fully competitive yet. Um, but it does mean Cassidy is leading the race at the moment. So congratulations, Nick Cassidy. So the rookie is leading uh, for one lap at least. 45 minutes for the race and then one additional lap at the end. And we're green. We're go. We're racing now. We are racing. And they're off. And Cassidy has gotten a great start. A great start. We have Nato, of course, in second place. Verline in third. Nato seems to be in sleeping. Ever so. Oh, no. Cassidy has spun. He has spun into the corner. He's dropped. He must be in 10th place now. Nato, the other, the other rookie, is winning the race. I cannot believe this. Uh, tongue in cheek, I was saying he was doing so well leading one lap behind the safety car in his in his rookie season. But I can't believe he spun the car. Oh, that is that is so disappointing. <sighs> Nato is now in the lead, Verline second, and we have Van Dorn in the in the Mercedes in third place. We'll see what he can do with this. Well, I I am. I'm so surprised that uh, Cassidy managed to spin the car there. He's in 11th place and he has uh, Mitch Evans just behind him in 12th place. So that's definitely not nice to have a Jaguar on your tail. Uh, Gunter has just overtaken Sims for fourth place. De Vries to Frines, six second gap. 17th to 18th. No idea what's going on there. Thank you very much to all of those tuning in live with us. Feel free to leave comments. We're a relatively new channel, so we rely on your support. And of course, very, very interested to hear what you think about this. What, what did you think of this spin? Cold tires. Uh, he had such a good start. Cassidy had such a good start over Nato and it looked like he had pulled out a bit of a gap. It was at least one second. So Nato was sleeping. Uh, but, you know, spe speaking about sleeping, it was obviously uh, Cassidy was sleeping because he lost it going into the corner and probably cold tires. Act attack mode activation is open now as well. 
that's a great variable to bring into the mix here. So let's see how it goes with that. The Costa is up to 14th place. He's just overtaken Blumpist. Cassidy has overtaken Buemi. He's up to ninth, so he's uh, he's coming back. Oh, he must be devastated. I'm sure there's an adrenaline rush going on in there in the car as well. Verline is 0.3 of a second behind Nato now, and Van Dorn is another four tenths of a second behind uh, behind uh, Verline. So. It's very tight racing once again. We're on board now with the uh, the in helmet camera uh, that they have for Sam Bird. This is this is fascinating, and you can see here just how close the cars get to each other, and how bumpy this track is as well. I hope they fixed all the manhole covers after yesterday because we do not want to see a repeat of that. Uh, it it looked very dramatic, but uh, you know Murphy's law was employed there for Mercedes. What can go wrong will go wrong. Uh, hitting a manhole cover and taking out your teammate, definitely not the way to go. Bert is in trouble. He is dropping down. Bert, as you know, is the championship leader. So this, this is a big deal. I don't know what happened there. Bert is now up into 10th place. There must have been an issue with the timing screen there. He's up into 10th. He's just after overtaking Buemi. So that's really confusing. Verline has just overtaken Nato. Very clean move. Verline is now leading the race. Verline is leading. Verline is, he's a tricky customer. Van Dorn just tried to overtake Nato and he's made contact. He's made contact now. Nato has left the door open again. Verline is trying to take it through the inside. He seems to have made it through this time, relatively clean. And it looks like Nato is trying to fight back immediately. And Gunter now is all over the back of Nato as well. So we've seen a change of the lead. We've seen a change of second position. It's now Verline leads, Van Dorn second, Nato third. And Verline has, he has a nice gap now uh, back to second place because of all the action that's been happening. They have actually caused the gap. Um, so as I was saying, Verline is a bit of an unknown quantity. He's a supremely fast driver. He's a very good racer normally, but he's a little bit unpredictable and he can do crazy things. And I, I have this memory of him even running out of power one of the races last year, and he was just trundled over the line uh, on the last lap, but he managed to do it. It's one point three seconds now between Van Dorn and Verline. So we're just looking down the field now. They're showing us some action uh, with Cassidy. Cassidy has overtaken Roland. He's now in seventh place. So the fight back is on. Mortara is in sixth. Uh, Roland has retaken Cassidy. So it's tit for tat at the moment. Roland is into attack mode. Now he has lost a couple of positions because of that, but he's fighting. Oh no. Cassidy was overtaking him around the outside, didn't leave him the space, and Roland hit into his back tire and has put Cassidy into the wall. 
Now, Cassidy, it looks like he's he's getting back out of the wall. There are no cars around, but he's obviously dropped way down the order. Roland, of course, in attack mode, so he was going a little bit faster. I just, I don't think Cassidy left enough room there for Roland. He closed the door completely. De Vries is now up into 15th place, so obviously some some uh, way off. Let's have a look at how the Tech Cheetah are doing. So Vern is in 19th place at the moment. Uh, he's just behind Rene Rast in the Audi. And we have De Costa in 13th place. So surprisingly, not very competitive at the moment out of the DS Tech Cheetah, especially as, as I keep saying with their new powertrain and them being so competitive last year, they were really the best team on the track last year. And so this new powertrain should be bringing with it performance. Of course, we have we have um, interesting conditions here. It is a little bit cold, a little bit overcast. It's cloudy here in Rome and the uh, track is wet in certain parts as well. Certainly contributed to cold tires when, uh, when Cassidy had the spin. So Cassidy is more or less going into a test program now. We've just heard on the team radio. He's he's kind of he's out of the running. He's in last place. Uh, Robert Brines has a penalty. I'm not sure what the penalty is for exactly. We've just over 30 minutes left in the race, and of course, one lap to go on top of that. So it's Verline leading, Van Dorn second, Nato third, Gunter fourth, Sims fifth, Roland sixth, Mortara seventh, Muller eighth. Third ninth and Buemi in tenth, and just outside the points we have Lucas de Grassi. So he's 0.6 of a second behind Buemi, and they are the old enemies going back to the start of this Formula E journey. Um, Sims has taken attack mode. Roland is on attack mode, and Mortara is on attack mode as well. And then we have Evans and De Costa in attack mode uh, further back. De Vries is now also in attack mode. Evans has moved up to 12th place. He's behind De Grassi, De Costa 13th, De Vries 14th. There's quality all through the field at the moment. Quality throughout the field. So Rollins and Cassidy are under investigation. Van Dorn has taken attack mode. Uh, Nato and Gunter have also taken attack mode, so it means Van Dorn has not lost any position. Now, Roland, Roland has just overtaken Nato with a, let's say, take get your elbows out uh, type of challenge there. And through all of that, Sims is now in third place. Of course, three attack modes. So all of the drivers should really be thinking about getting into their first attack mode at this point in time. Verline still hasn't taken an attack mode. Roland, his first attack mode is gone and he's dropped ever so slightly. Gunter has overtaken him. Gunter, of course, has attack mode. Nato is trying his best to get past Roland, and he's 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 actually employing a very similar strategy. Get your elbows out, push your way through. Oh, Bird had a coming together there with Muller. Looks like there isn't much damage to both of the cars, but Muller gets pushed off into the escape road, and Bird uh, Bird loses positions because of that. It looks like that's that's Degrassi has come through there, so it's. Pro Degrassi, Degrassi is out. Degrassi has hit somebody. It looks like he has damage on the front of the car. Van Dorn is, Van Dorn is winning the race. 
So I don't think I was sleeping. It looks like the, the race director here has been sleeping. We've missed out on a whole bunch of action here whilst they were showing us replays. Van Dorn is winning the race at the moment. Um, I don't know how he got past Verlein. Degrassi is on the radio. He he claims he's been taken out in a super dangerous, crazy maneuver. I don't know who took him up. Bird now is in free fall. Um, I assume Verline lost first place when he went into activate attack mode. Now he has much more attack mode. We're into full course yellow. Full course yellow. Something has happened here. So we're on board now with Degrassi. Looks like he's been hit by another car and he's been put straight into the wall. And so we have a full course yellow, as I've said now, because of this. Degrassi obviously is not happy. And there is another chance of points disappearing. He's been tagged at the back. So Degrassi was moving across the track, but he, he's been tagged. He was Buemi as well. So this, this, isn't, uh, this isn't by any means a, a rookie driver that we're dealing with here. Um, so Degrassi moved across the track and for whatever reason, uh, Buemi tagged him. I, I don't think Buemi tagged him on purpose. I think it was the movement from Degrassi actually was so sudden and, and erratic that it caused this accident to happen. So Van Dorn is running out of attack mode now because of the, you know, obviously it's timing down. He has about three seconds left and we're on the full course yellow. Verline still has attack mode, but of course he can't really utilize that with the full course yellow at the moment. We're back to green flag racing. They're showing us replays of the start again, uh, where Cassidy just loses it as he goes into the corners. Cold tires, obviously, it just it, it's gone. It, it it sounds like they're having some kind of issue with Axel. That's what they're saying on the radio now. Um, so we're we're back racing, and this is insane. They're not showing us anything. Nato. Uh, now we're we have an on board with uh, with Buemi, but we've completely missed out on what actually happened there. So once again, that wasn't that wasn't great. Um, it looks like we're back into a full course yellow again. I'm not sure why the green flag was waved there. Yeah, it's definitely full course yellow again. Uh, Verline, his attack mode is about to expire. So he's going to lose that opportunity now to fight back with Van Dorn. This has definitely helped Van Dorn out. Um, of course, two more attack modes to go. So that is really going to uh, spice things up. Uh, now, after all the excitement has settled down, attack modes expiring for the remaining cars. Roland has two seconds left on his as well. Bird has 10 seconds left. Uh, Van Dorn is leading. We have Verline in second place. He's eight seconds behind Van Dorn. I don't know why Verline is so far behind. We, we've really, um, the race director has not helped us here. We've missed an awful lot of the race because they're showing us replays at bad times. Um, Buemi and Degrassi under investigation. That's not a surprise. We have Sims in third place. He's right on the tail of Verline. So as soon as we get going again, I assume that uh, he will be all over him. Gunter is fourth. We're green flag and Sims is on it. And Sims has overtaken Verline. Verline sleeping on the restart. Sims was waiting. He was ready, ready, ready. And a second it went green, he got in. Sims on the radio to say that there is a front wing left at one of the corners. 
uh, which could be dangerous. Sims now is two seconds behind Van Dorn. Uh, I don't know what has happened here. Van Dorn was six seconds ahead of Verline under the full course yellow. And all of a sudden now there's two seconds between Van Dorn and Sims in second place. Did Sims jump the start? Or was Van Dorn asleep as well? Van Dorn has lost four seconds on the restart. Gunter is going for the attack mode. Mortara is going for the attack mode. And it looks like Roland. No, Buemi. Buemi took the attack mode as well. Van Dorn has also taken attack mode, so this will be his second attack mode. Uh, this is his opportunity now to pull out a bit of a lead. Uh, Sims, though, it looks like he's closing in a little bit on Van Dorn. Verline, obviously not very happy. He's right on the tail of Sims now, so he definitely wants that position back. And of course, Verline, Verline should be winning the race. You would think the way things would aggregate out after all of the um ooh. Gunter has just overtaken Nato, but poor Nato, he's having he's having a bad race because everybody here, they're all getting their elbows out, being very physical, they're all pushing him around. Um not really unfairly, you could say nobody has been penalized for it yet. So Van Dorn is in the lead after the first round of attack modes, and we're very much into the second round of attack modes now. Sims, Verline, Nato, Gunter, Mur Murtara uh, are all in attack mode now as well. Um, Verline really pressuring Sims for that second position. Uh, Sims is doing a great job in the in the uh, in the dragon. Um, that is no, sorry, dragon Mahindra. They're both red and white cars. He's uh, he's driving the Mahindra this year. Of course, Sims was driving for the uh, BMW Andretti last year. Um, Mortara, Mortara's just had an issue. He's he got a lock up and ran wide there and has been overtaken by a few cars. The Costa is now up into 10th place after starting in 18th. Now we're on, we're looking at Nick De Vries. He's locked it up. Oh, he's trying to keep the back of the car out of the wall. Uh, that certainly won't help his tires. As you know, unlike Formula One, there isn't an opportunity to, to um, pit to change your tires. I, I guess you could go into the pits if absolutely necessary, but you're really going to lose out in some very tight racing within Formula E. So Van Dorn is in the lead still. 5.8 seconds now between Van Dorn and Sims. So Sims clearly is now becoming the bottleneck. Verline trying his best to get past Sims, but he hasn't actually made any challenge yet. And th this is all playing into Van Dorn's hands now. In Formula E, let's say in modern Formula E, a uh, six second lead is quite a big lead to have. Um, you know, it's it, it it's not quite as tight as, uh, as MotoGP, I would say. Uh, those levels of tightness, but it's very close to that. Nato's attack mode is done, and he has Gunter coming behind him on attack mode. Verline and Sims, it looks like they have very, very equal amounts of attack mode left. They both have um, two chevrons on the screen at the moment. Anything interesting going on down the field? Let me have a look. Uh, we have 
Evans in ninth. Uh, Gunter just tried to move there on Nato, and he nearly lost control of the car. It didn't work for him. He tried to pull out of it, and the car starts to wobble from side to side as he did so. Uh, but he he has managed to control it, and he's kept his position. So Buemi is behind Roland, so the teammates seventh and eighth. Costa now in ninth, so there we have a DS Tachita coming into the points, and Evans is in tenth, and so Evans is in the other, uh, I guess the other very impressive car this season, the Jaguar. Mortara is going for attack mode now, and he is being oh, he, okay, he's only he's only lost one position. De Costa has just overtaken Buemi in the middle of the mess there. Buemi was trying to overtake Mortara. Roland did get past Mortara, but now De Costa has taken Buemi. And De Costa now directly behind Mortara. De Costa only has 15 seconds left on his attack mode. Just over 18 minutes left in this race. The lead Van Dorn has over since has dropped slightly. It's now 4.9 seconds, still quite a substantial lead to have in place. And it's about one second now between Sims and Berlin. Sims has definitely found a bit of speed. Uh, and it seems that the uh, Mahindra is doing much better when the cars are out of attack mode. Uh, Gunther still all over the tail of Nato. What can Nato do? Can he, can he hold him off? Fourth place still. I guess he'll be disappointed with that, considering he started in second and then had the lead after the first few corners when Cassidy uh, spun off. Cassidy, just out of interest, is in 23rd place at the moment. So that's basically last place because Degrassi is out of the race. So no points again for Lucas Degrassi. This is uh, this is this is tough to take because the, uh, the Audi is. It's a good car. It is a good car. It seems to have a good powertrain. Rast was impressive the first weekend. He hasn't been so much so this weekend. He did manage to finish, I think it was sixth yesterday. And that was after all the carnage with the two Mercedes taking each other out. Um, so that was actually a good result because he was really out of the points for the majority of the race. Sims is back into attack mode. So this is attack mode number three. Verline also in attack mode. Nato in attack mode. Mortara in attack mode. Gunther in attack mode. Uh, Gunther seems to have lost out of position to Mortara there because of the attack mode. Mortara is much further into his attack mode. So clearly, you know, he just took track position when Gunther went white to activate attack mode. Um, the, the, the commentators on Eurosport uh, are currently talking about the fact that um, Sims and Verline, that Verline has basically replicated Sims uh, for his strategy in taking an attack mode, and he should have done something different because otherwise he's not going to beat him. And um, Verline never looked like overtaking Sims since we had the restart. Uh, and uh, he's still driving around. So in very close proximity to him, there is about, there is, uh, there's five tenths of a second between them at the moment. But Verline hasn't tried anything yet. Is he waiting? Is he conserving power? All the time he's doing this, though, Van Dorn is getting away. Van Dorn has been able to activate his attack mode now without any harm from the cars behind him because, of course, he has he has that gap now back to second place. Um, all going well. This should be Van Dorn's race. Of course, energy will be the very interesting thing just to see how that goes towards the end of the race. We were more or less robbed of that yesterday because of the safety car coming out towards the end of the race. So there, there was no issue with conserving energy to the very end of the race. So Van Dorn leads. Yep, 
we have a fan boost. It's De Costa. De Costa has activated his fan boost. And he is past Rollins. De Costa up into seventh place. And De Costa is in uh he is in uh, attack mode as well. All this terminology, I have such a hard time remembering the difference between fan boost and attack mode, and I end up just calling them both the boost. But uh Luckily, I've differentiated here. So De Costa now is behind Gunter in sixth place, and we have Mortara in fifth place ahead of them. Van Dorn still has a comfortable lead here. Um, he doesn't look like he's in any danger from Sims and Verline. And what I suspect is going to happen uh, will be that uh, Sims and Verline are going to trip over each other before the end of the race, and that will uh, result in an even bigger lead. Roland has gone into his attack mode and he's lost out here because he's now behind his teammate. And there looks like there's somebody else in the mix here as well. It's De Vries. Sims, Verline, Nato, Gunter all into their last 10 seconds. De Costa of attack mode and Buemi as well. So those are all the cars that would have taken the attack mode in around the same time. Uh, Buemi just running out of attack mode now. Mortara making the move on Gunter. Or is it the other way around? But Mortara is currently ahead of Gunter. They're very, very close. It looks like Gunter is going to try a challenge here. He's lining it up for the corner. He's behind. Uh, they can't do anything there. There is, you can see there's bodywork all over the track there. You can't go wide there too. Verline. What has happened, Verline? Verline has dropped into fourth place now. Nato is back into third. Muller and Bird being investigated. No further action on that one. Okay, the investigation is complete. What happened to Verline? He's he's now in fourth place. Um, I had noticed a small gap between Sims and Verline, but I, I didn't see Nato coming into the picture at all. So Nato has, obviously, he's overtaken Verline. Uh, Sims has a bit of a gap between them. And of course, there's a huge gap then back to the, uh, back to the start, uh, or to the lead, I should say. Just looking now at... Uh, one of the Venturis. Yeah, so this is Nato's move on Verline. It was a clean move, very, very nice move. He gets him through the inside of the corner and off he goes. And you can see Sims there uh, just ahead of them. Van Dorn leading. Now let's get a, let's get an update on this gap between Van Dorn and Sims. Is Sims making any grounds at all into, uh, into Van Dorn? Once again, I'd also, I'd love to see the energy the remaining energy for the teams here. Uh, I want to know how we're set up for the very end here because what will happen is somebody will have less energy than the others and will really have to try very hard to conserve energy towards the end. It'll be it'll be very much uh, a coasting around. And as you know, that's much slower than having your foot down. 4.3 seconds it is between Sims and Van Dorn. Um, we have about, we have, well, we have 11 minutes left and we have one additional lap that will go with the race as well. Uh, Nato is now four tenths ahead of Verline. So th th this is the problem with Verline again. Um, I, uh, I I don't know what to make of him. He seems really, really good sometimes, and then other times he's just plain unimpressive. And this, from initially leading the race, losing out unfortunately through the full course yellow um, and the the first phase of attack modes. To being completely asleep at the restart and being overtaken by Sims, not being able to fight back with Sims, and now being overtaken by Nato as well. He's going backwards. It's not impressive, unfortunately. Uh, and when I saw that uh, Verline was very much in the mix at the start, I was excited. This this could be this could be a great race because Verline is an exciting driver, but he's been very unimpressive here. He's he's kind of dropping backwards. Now he's trying to fight it out with uh, with Nato again, but
So Rast, whilst he was overtaking Nick DeVries, they're just showing us the replay right now, he actually ran over some bodywork from his teammate, who is now out of the race. Degrassi is out after crashing into the wall. And um, it looks like Rast has collected some of that wing. So at least it's a piece of an Audi on an Audi, but uh, it's definitely not going to help his aero. He managed to keep control. He managed to complete the overtake. And uh, he's now right behind Sam Bird. And he is moving that car all over the track. He's looking for an opportunity before his, uh, his attack mode runs out to get past Bird. That would put him into the points. And once again, a, a little bit of an understated performance, I suppose, from Rast starting so far down the field, but, but making it into the points. He's not there yet, I should add, but uh, it looks like he's, he's definitely got his eyes on that. Now, uh, coming back to the front of the track, we have uh, Nato and Verline. Verline is now all over Nato. There's 2% difference in terms of usable energy between them. Nato has 25% and Verline has 27%. Van Dorn, just for context, the race leader, also has 27%. And Sims has 28%. But it, it keeps flipping between 27 28%. So that's the regen, obviously, kicking in there. Verline has been told he has 2% additional energy over uh, over NATO. Um, great, let's see him do something with that, though. Oh, no, we have another Audi in the wall. It's Rene Rast. I was saying he was looking very aggressive. That car was moving all over the track. And uh, he's in the wall now. Oh, it's not a good location. He had oversteer. De Costa is in eighth place at the moment. Where is Vern? Vern is in sixteenth place, and he doesn't. He's he's low on energy as well. So that that car is uh, that Audi of Rast is now at the side of the track. Uh, we have yellow flags out, but, but I think this is going to require a little more than a yellow flag. This is probably a safety car, or full course yellow. Um, nothing, nothing confirmed yet. Now, a replay of Rast. Yeah, the wishbone is broken on the car, like he said, and he could not keep control of it. He loses the back of the car. It swings around and hits the wall. Um, and that's it. That's, oh, this, this is a, a really bad weekend for Audi. Rast, of course, came sixth in yesterday's race, but Degrassi was winning the race until very close to the end, and he had a total power. Uh, failure, loss, whatever you want to call it. The car just wasn't moving forward. It was dropping, dropping, dropping. Uh, the safety car is out. We have the safety car, so that's confirmed. Now, this makes things interesting because the field gets to cram up behind Van Dorn. So all of a sudden, his five-second lead has disappeared. Uh, so this is this is good for the race. Let's see what Sims can do off the restart again. Sims was definitely, uh, he was very alert the last time. Now, I know it was full course yellow ye uh, yesterday, the last time um, earlier in this race, I should say. So that is definitely today uh, versus what we had for uh, now, which is the safety car. But Sims was really alert last time. Let's see if he can do something similar again and get the jump on Van Dorn. Van Dorn's lead now is cut down because of the safety car. Nato, of course, is in third place. Verline is in fourth. Verline has the energy advantage at the moment over Nato, but Verline should be winning this race. Verline has really, he, he has been, as I keep saying, he's been unimpressive for such an exciting driver. He's been unimpressive uh, so far in this race. At least he's still in the race, unlike both of the Audis who have managed to find the wall, both of them. And they're the only two cars out of the race. Um, Cassidy, unfortunately, uh, for him, is running in last place. So he's not out of the race. He's had a very eventful race. But uh, yeah. Van Dorn has fan boost. 
and um, his team have just been on the radio to tell him to consider using that on the restart. So obviously they are worried about uh, Sims at the restart as well. Um, now an onboard again, we're not an onboard, a replay here of what happened to Rene Rast. Oh, coming around the corner, he's tipped the back of the car off the wall and that's resulted in the broken wishbone. And that's why he's he's struggling to keep control of the car as he's coming down the straight, loses the back of it, bins it into the wall. And uh, yeah, that is another Audi out of the race. Both Audis out of the race. Very, very bad result for them this weekend. And it's such a fast car as well. This is this is really not good. They 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 could be competing for the wins. They should be competing for the wins. Um Regardless, we have Van Dorn in the lead. We have Sims in second place. Van Dorn, of course, in the Mercedes. Sims is in the Mahindra. We have Nato in third place and Nato driving for the Venturi racing team. Verline in the Porsche in fourth place. Mortara in the other Venturi in fifth place. And Gunter in the Andretti BMW iSport in uh, sixth place. So there are just over three minutes left in the race. Uh, we, of course, have one additional lap then after the time expires. Um, so we're still going around behind the safety car. I'm hoping, I'm hoping we get uh, we get a little bit of racing before the uh, before the finish. Unlike yesterday, where we did finish behind the safety car, bit of an anticlimax, and of course, all that usable energy. We want to see where the cars are with the usable energy, what they can do with that energy. They're doing quite well at the moment. You know, three minutes left in this race is a 45 minute race and um, they have almost a quarter of the battery. Now, because they've been driving around behind the safety car, they will have some of that power taken away from them. Uh, that's only fair. Lynn, Frimes and Cassidy have an attack mode remaining as well. And if they do not get an opportunity to use this before the end of the race, they will be heavily penalized. Uh, so that's definitely, definitely not what they want. So we're live and we're waiting now. We're waiting for an update to see what happens. Um, I haven't seen a picture yet of them clearing away that Audi. So I don't know how close we are to a restart here, but we're still going around behind the safety car. Every two minutes of racing left now. I really, really hope that we get to see a little bit of racing before the end. As it stands, Van Dorn is leading the race. And if we finish behind the safety car, of course, um, yeah, he is going to win, of course, unchallenged to an extent. So the safety car is coming in very soon and we're about to get racing again, which is fantastic. Just over a minute of racing left and then of course one additional lap. So we don't have a lot of racing left. Uh, let's see what Sims can do. Can Sims get Van Dorn? Will Van Dorn hang on for the lead? And of course we have Nato in third place. Verline has quite a bit more energy than Nato as well. So Verline will try to get back onto the podium. Um, maybe Martara will take Verline. Of course, uh, Verline actually has 2% usable energy additional over Martara as well. So Verline is doing well on the energy stakes here. Um, his racecraft has not been so good today, unfortunately. I need to I need to stop going on about this, but I've been unfortunately unimpressed with Verline today. Sims is getting ready for the restart. The good news here for Van Dorn is that he gets to control the restart. Unlike the full course yellow where it suddenly switches to a green flag, Van Dorn is in control of the restart here. So theoretically, Sims should not get the jump on him here. 
Okay, they're slowing green flag. They're racing. They're racing. Van Dorn is leading. This is the final lap because they did not come around before zero. So this is the final lap. Sims really is pushing, actually. You can see that. And so we have 5% energy for Van Dorn, 6% for Sims, 3% energy for Nato. I do not know if Nato has enough energy to make this. This, this, is, uh, this is getting exciting now. Um, Nato's energy is at 3%. Is it enough to make it around the full lap? If everybody going hell for leather here. 1% now for Nato. Oh, there's a bit of a collision back there between Mortara and Gunter. They've managed to keep... Oh, there we go. Three cars, three cars off. There's two into the wall. One of them has come back around. But he's come He's come across the moving traffic. That's not good. So it's Bird and Debris in the wall. A yellow flag at the moment. I don't know if they're going to full course yellow this because, of course, they are just... This is the final lap, so they will be just coming around to the start finish. Mortara, 1% energy remaining. Nato, 1%. Van Dorn in the lead has 2%. Sims has 3%. Verlein needs to get the position now from Nato. He's trying everything he can, but Nato is hanging on. Nato has 0.5% remaining. Sims has 2%, while Van Dorn has 1%. Can Sims take the race? It doesn't look like it at the moment. Van Dorn has a good lead there. Van Dorn wins. Sims is second. Nato is third. Van Dorn wins the race. Great result for Van Dorn. Sims didn't attempt anything. Verlein was all over the back of Nato. He was pushing, he was pushing, but he just did not have the ability to get past. And to be perfectly honest, he did not pull off many moves at all during this race. But that's a great result for Venturi. Nato comes third, Mortara comes fifth. So Verlein, of course, for Porsche is in fourth. Where did Lotterer finish in the other Porsche? In 18th place. Very far down. Bird de Vries do not finish the race after um, managing to end up in the wall at the very end. And they're actually just showing us de Vries now. So he's still sitting in the car, even though the front of his car is lodged into the barriers. So jubilation for one of the Mercedes drivers and pain for the other as uh, de Vries goes into the wall on the last lap. But it's Van Dorn who is our winner. I wonder what that does to the championship table. Great result for the Mercedes. And of course, for Mahindra, second place for Sims. That is also a very good result for them. I, I generally don't associate um, the Mahindra with the front of the grid. And uh, they, they've really pulled that out. So that's a great result for them. Sims, of course, is a very good driver. He showed himself last year when he was driving as well with BMW Andretti. What a good driver he was. Um, not sure why he actually left BMW Andretti in the end and moved over to Mahindra, but uh, he has certainly been impressive so far this year. And Van Dorn wins. So good news for Van Dorn there. Uh, let me very quickly check the comments. We have nothing new there. So thank you very much, everybody, who joined us live for this race. A very exciting weekend once again in Formula E. And thankfully, we didn't finish off a race with a car upside down and a red flag. That is definitely a good result. Um, exciting race yesterday, exciting race again today. Of course, tricky conditions here in the Rome Ypres with a, with a slippery surface. Uh, both races started behind the safety car. There is a whole load of commotion going on down the field. They're just showing us replays of what happened at the very end there with the, with the Roland's bird and debris and uh it was it was three abreast coming down that street going into the corner oh my goodness it's almost a t-bone from bird anyhow i'm losing the run of myself as i was saying thank you very much for joining us if you're watching this a little bit later 
try your best to sync this up with the uh, with the recording of the race and uh, enjoy it with us. And um, if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up and, of course, subscribe to the page as well. And we're hoping to do this again in the future for the next round of the Formula E Championship. And, of course, next weekend, we hope to be online for a watch along with the Formula One Grand Prix coming to us from Imola. Uh, how can Verstappen do? How will Hamilton do? Uh, this is the big question. Where are the cars at? We had uh, we had one race, of course, already at the Bahrain Grand Prix three weeks ago, two weeks ago, I guess, uh, three weeks next week. And um, that was hugely interesting because, of course, it looked like the Red Bull was faster, but the Mercedes won out in the end. Um, now, when you take the whole heat factor, I guess, out of the equation, uh, where are the performances of those cars at? And, of course, there were rumors that Honda weren't at full power and that... Um, uh, Verstappen had damage to the floor of the car and that reduced his speed as well. It remains to be seen. So an exciting weekend, I hope, ahead of us for the uh, for the Formula One next weekend. I'm just hearing Nato is in some kind of trouble for power over usage as well. So Van Dorn wins. Sims is second. Van Dorn is just pulling into the podium celebrations now. And I, I don't know what has happened with Nato. Nato is under investigation, so he's still in third place. Energy overuse as opposed to overpower. Oof. Susie Wolf in the background celebrating really hard, but uh, she could be losing that position. They could be losing that position. I think it's almost a done deal when they're under investigation. No, it is energy overuse. <laughs> They've corrected themselves. Okay, I am going to go ahead and end the stream there. Um, we will catch up with you again really, really soon. And um, yeah, speak to you then. Have a great rest of your weekend.